Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mike. I am the American Analyst, and today we're going to be talking about the potential for a new Cold War, or in a better way to say that, the state of the current Cold War. If you like what I do, please be sure to subscribe to my channel here on YouTube, like this video, and follow me on Twitter and Mods. Let's get into it. Okay, so I wanted to talk a bit about the history of the Cold War, the more the chronology of the Cold War, and cur our current relations with China, obviously, in regards to with everything that's going on right now, and of course, the future of, of what I think is going to happen. So uh, I have here a website, historylearningsite.co.uk. It seems fine enough. I'm more just using it as a jumping off point. So they have the start of the Cold War as the dropping of the atomic bombs. I actually don't think that's the case. I think you could go further back. Um, I've heard one historian say that the Cold War started in 1941 with the German invasion of the Soviet Union. And the Soviet Union's determination to never be surprised like that again so basically they were going to create this ring of satellite states in Europe so they would never ever be surprised like that again they'd have you know you'd have to go to go through two or three countries to even get into the Soviet Union so and I, I think that's a pretty compelling argument as as far as the motivations from the Soviet side but not necessarily the American slash Western motivations, and it's obviously not between them. Cold War is between the United States and the Soviet Union. So I don't, I don't know if you can go back to forty one. I definitely would say at least, at least in nineteen forty three, with the Yalta Conference and the Allies' decision to go into Normandy as opposed to invading in into the Balkans, that definitely uh, put a rift between the British and the Americans at least, but had serious consequences later with the Soviet Union occupying Eastern Europe. And the first overt event was the, uh, it was the European Commission. So there were supposed to be um, Poles who were part of this European Commission uh, that came into Poland uh, as the war was ending. And they were promised a uh, place in the government because the Stalin promised the allies that the government wouldn't be entirely communist. Um, and they were promised safe conduct so they wouldn't be arrested by the Soviets as soon as they, as soon as they landed, which is of course exactly what happened. And I think that was the first real um, test right there. That was the first time the Americans definitely thought hey you know we could have a problem here and of course Patton hated the Soviets he wanted to keep going Churchill considered keep going Churchill considered going like to war with the Soviets after we beat the Nazis but Patton actually wanted to and so putting it as 45 with the A-bomb dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki I'd say that's an event I wouldn't say it's a start um the atomic bombs, as, as an aside, there was an element of demonstrating the power that the United States had at the time, but it wasn't the, the motivation. It wasn't to show the bombs weren't dropped on these two cities because of the Soviet Union. It was part of it, but it wasn't the deciding factor. Um, deciding factor would be the fanaticism of the Japanese, I would say. That being said... This is a pretty good timeline. So 45, we have bombs, and then the Marshall Plan comes into effect two years later, which is where we basically just <laughs> we basically just gave Western Europe. This is two years after World War II, so it was devastated. Basically just gave them one sixteenth of the federal budget 
and said, please don't vote communist. <laughs> uh, and it worked, obviously. Um, the Soviets did not do that. That is true. And then 48, they said, this says the Berlin blockade was started in 48, ended in 49. That's true. But the event is more commonly known as the Berlin airlift. It's a very interesting and um, overlooked point in history that, and, and a lot of people put this as the actual start. Like all these things were leading up to the Cold War, but a lot of people put the Berlin airlift as the actual start. So in World War II, after World War II, I should say, Germany was broken up into four zones. You had the British, American, and French zone and the Soviet zone. But also Berlin itself, which was well within the Soviet zone, was also divided up between the four allies. So you had the, again, the British, French, American zone and the, uh, Germ or, and the Soviet zone. But one day, Stalin um, decided that he kind of didn't really want the Allies in Berlin anymore. So he thought, okay, well, uh, this is well within the Soviet zone. We're just going to cut off their supplies until they leave. So it wasn't really an act of war, but it was extremely aggressive. So you just yeah, cut the train line. No more food. They'll have to leave. You know, you say, hey, look, we don't want anybody to starve. Just leave. So what the Americans did was say, okay, well, we've got all these, <laughs> we've got all these B-29 super fortresses, B-17 flying fortresses, B-24 liberators just sitting around. It's only three years after World War II. Why don't we just load up a bunch of food onto these ones, <laughs> onto these things here, and just fly to the airport? which was in the, um, I, I'm not sure, it was in one of the allied zones, not the Soviet zone. We just fly to the airport, drop it off. And that's what the Americans did. Supplied an entire city from the air. So proof that Stalingrad could have been supplied from the air, I guess. Uh, I guess a bit of a history joke there. Um, so this is the start. And then it goes through the chronology. I really wanted to talk about China because they are at this point this could be a bullet point from somebody else let's see the cold war has started in 48 so now it's 52 72 years later 72 years from now this could be a bullet point for when did this start happening coronavirus breaks out and china refuses to give medicine that we paid for to us now I can do a whole nother video about the um, imbeciles who decided to it was a great idea to put all of our uh, medical manufacturing in China but I think that if they continue to hold up some of these medical supplies then it's going to get very serious very quickly and we have to we have to get out of China we have to got to get all of our manufacturing out of there right away right away um as far as historical comparisons it's not a perfect comparison but it's apt i think there's only two countries right now that you could legitimately call superpowers and that would be the united states and china so two there are only two countries that can exert influence outside of their own region of the globe so in china you have east asia and obviously north america it's the only two countries that could do anything outside of those two regions and yet the the difference i would say is between the two powers because soviet union had a larger population than the united states in the 40s and 50s actually i think up until the 90s but the American economy was much, much, much larger than the Soviet economy. And that is not the case with China. So I think this second round of the Cold War is going to be a lot more difficult than the first. I think things are going to get worse. Um, it's not going to be until this corona business boils over. But once that happens, 
people will be held to account for their manufacturing practices in China, and people are going to start to leave. And as our economic systems begin to disentangle, it'll make the potential for conflict much greater. Um, I don't know what to do because you can't, when somebody's bullying you, the worst thing to do is just step that is a step down to cower but nobody wants a conflict and not only that i mean in in many ways the the chinese communists are worse than the soviets in many ways even even the modern ones i mean it's just the the only thing we could do i guess i'm a bit cynical i don't know if we could win in a second cold war it seems as if the tide of history is is beginning to turn uh, against the United States. But fair enough, people said that in the 60s and the 30s. So, I don't know. I don't know if we could win, but I think that it's something that we have to do if we want to stand up for our principles. I'll leave it there. If you like what I do, please be sure to subscribe to my channel, like this video, follow me on Twitter and Minds. Have a good evening. Thank you all for listening. This is Mike, the American Analyst. Follow me on Twitter, Minds, and subscribe to me on YouTube. And be sure to hit that bell notification and be coming out with new videos every single day for your viewing enjoyment. Have a good one.